And so because we have a 2D reservoir, we need, I mentioned earlier, we need a, an additional index that we didn't have before. So in 1D, we can index everything by I. In 2D, we're going to add an additional J index, and we're also going to add one more way to look at it. So we have this reservoir. We're going to start our numbering scheme here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we're going to say that the nx, so number in the x direction, if you will, is equal to three. And ny is equal to four. And we're going to keep our I index for the sort of uh, X index, right? So we're going to say that this is I equals 1, I equals 2, I equals 3. And then we're going to have J equals 1, J equals 2, J equals 3, J equals 4. Right. So that makes sense to everybody? So if j is just equal to 1, we just have a one-dimensional reservoir again, right? If j, if, if there's no 2, 3, 4, right? So then we just have i's again. We can index everything. Yeah? Is there any way to make No, 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 no. Uh, in that case, you just say your j's would be numbered down. There's, there's no, as long as you're consistent, it'll work. No, I don't think so, because these are not going, you'll see, these are not going to be entries in a matrix. They're not going to be, these are not going to correspond to the i and j entries of a matrix. These are the i and j grid blocks. And what we'll use these i and j's primarily for is for computing transmissibilities. And, and we'll see that in, the, in just a second, okay? What you actually use to populate the matrix is a third variable right, that we're going to call L, and it's, it's going to be simply the grid block number. Right? So L equals 1, L equals 2, L equals 3, L equals 4, L equals 5, L equals 6. Okay. So, so remember, and the reason, just to, to point out, like, remember the T matrix? It has the number of rows and columns equal to the number of grid blocks. So in our example here, T would have 12 rows and 12 columns. But your I and J indices only go from 1 to 3 and 1 to 4. So there's no way to directly construct a matrix with those in indices. Now, it turns out that L is related to J and I and, and either nx or ny, but let's say, let's just use nx. Can you give me an equation? Can anyone tell me what the equation is that relates L to i, j, and nx? J minus 1 times nx plus i. So if j is 1, I have 1 minus 1, which is 0, times nx. So that is the whole thing is 0. And then I just have i left over. So for j equals 1, then I just have 1, 2, 3. Right? For j equals 2, then, so I have 2 minus 1 is 1 times nx. So nx is 3. So then I have 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 3 is 6. And so on. Right. Incidentally, if you used a real, this is, this is MATLAB syntax. If you use a real programming language where your indices start with 0, 
Then you don't need the J minus one. You just have J. Because right? the, the J is zero to zero. Anyway. Okay, so we'll see in a minute uh, how the I's and J's become useful. And, it, and it, it's related to when we talk about you know, how you should write that transmissibility function in homework four. You'll see that it, uh, even though homework four is in 1D, if you use the I and J indices, it's very little different. It's very, there's very little difference um, to, than, than computing the transmissibilities here in a 2D problem. 